We've got Steve Sosnick here, the Interactive Brokers Chief Market Strategist, and Vance uh, Jennings back with us, the former Office of Management Budget Chief Economist under President Trump. Um, Vance, so far, so relatively okay. In other words, he seems to be saying what we thought he would be saying, that we did take a pause, that is the Federal Reserve, on hiking interest rates, uh, but it doesn't mean that that's permanently going to be the case. Seem to telegraph a couple of more rate hikes, as expected. What your thoughts? Hey, Neil, it's a pleasure to be with you today. And, and look, I think just like here in Austin, Texas, where I'm at, things are still running pretty hot. <laughs> the high today is going to be 102, and we're still seeing inflation at 4%, um, and that's over the 8% that we were at last year. So this is kind of compounding the effects on wages as wages haven't been able to keep up for 26 straight months. I think that they need to do more to really cut their balance sheet to really get a handle of inflation. And when you look at the financial conditions, financial conditions still seem very loose. And so it's no wonder that you're having the markets not – you know, really cratering at this point. So I think there's still a lot more that the Federal Reserve, and in, and in particular, Jerome Powell, needs to do to get the handle of inflation. And maybe that's what the bond market's telling us, Steve. I mean, if you look at a 10-year, no, no, not around three and three quarters percent. When I was charting this puppy and looking at it over the last 52 weeks, it got as low as two and a half percent. If we can just take a quick peek at rates, guys, uh, got as low as two and a half percent. We've been everywhere and anywhere in between. As recently uh, as just a few weeks ago, 3.16%. So we've been all over the map, but it's clearly a sign that the markets, at least the bond market, is anticipating some strong economic activity and maybe inflation that goes with that. What do you think? Well, yes, Neil. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, the bond market, though, is telling a very mixed message. You know, yes, two-year rates had an even sharper rise in the time period you're discussing. They went up, call it a full percent, you know, over the past month or so. But one of the other things is the, the bond market really is sending a big recession signal. Um, the two-year note yield is about a full percentage point above that of the 10-year note yield. That's a big inversion, and that's usually one of the most foolproof signals about a recession that could be forthcoming. But it's also important to keep in mind that in general, bond trading, bond investors take a, a glass half empty view of life. You know, they, they the best they can do is get back their principal and interest and hope that nothing goes wrong, whereas stock investors tend to be a much more glass half full type of approach. Whereas, you know, because stock traders tend to think about what can go right and how much money I can make. And so they can diverge from time to time. Although over time, the bond market tends to have the more sober view of things. All right, well, if it's a sobering view, Vance, what it seems to be telling us is expect more rate hikes. I'm taking that leap here. I'm not saying that's a fact. Um, how many more do you think will happen? And, and, and will they be enough? In other words, uh, the fear is that the Fed overdoes it, hikes rates too much. Um, that was all wisdom behind the pause, sort of reassess where things are. If they don't do that and just resume the hiking campaign, let's say in July, then what? Uh, Neil, I think that they will raise hikes again in July. They took this one month pause kind of see what's happening in the marketplace with the bank failures and other things that have been going on recently. And then the lagged effect that you have on some of these markets um, because of their actions they've taken in the past. We had 10 hikes, right, in a, in a row over the last year and a half from zero to 5.25% now. And I think that they will have at least up to 6% um, is at least what the Federal Reserve's kind of projections show by the end of the year will be at 6% for their target interest rate. I think it may need to go higher than that. But, but Neil, I think another thing we really need to focus on is the Fed's balance sheet, which is down about 6%, you know, year over year, but it's still well above where it was before the pandemic, about double what it was before the pandemic. Money in money supply, M2, is down about 5% year over year. So these are pretty historic amounts of declines. But the problem was, is we had such a huge increase um, during the pandemic and thereafter that you've really got to start to drain that liquidity, that money out of the economy. And unfortunately, I see a hard landing in the second half of the year uh, with a higher unemployment rate and many people losing their jobs, unfortunately, in the process because of these government failures that have happened over the last couple of years. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to necessarily go rah-rah for government and how it's been doing, but looking at the market, Steve, they certainly climbed a wall of worry over this. The administration is crowing about the steady job gains, the fact that inflation, though still a problem, is half what it was a year ago, and then they refer to those retail sales. We're seeing it impact restaurants, theaters, you know the drill, that that will be a sign that all these recession fears out there are misplaced. What do you think of that? Well, 
when people have jobs, they tend to spend money. That's you know that that they reward themselves, and they should. If you if you've worked if you've been working hard, you 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 can en entitle yourself to to whether it's a vacation, or a night out, a visit to a restaurant, whatever it is. You know that's a good thing, and we certainly don't want to see uh, you know people not uh, enjoying the fruits of their labor and, and or being able to to have jobs. Going forward, though, um, you know the the comments about the balance sheet are very well taken because. Um, you know, Powell was pretty resolute in his comments. It doesn't come up as much as the rate hike stuff, but he was pretty resolute in saying the Fed is going to yeah. need to shrink their balance sheet. And it's not a coincidence at all that this recent rally was, you know, started a couple of weeks after the Fed increased their balance sheet by about $300 billion because of the result of the banking crisis. Now, I'm not saying they shouldn't have done that. It, they are the bank, reg, you know, they, they are the bank of last resort, so to speak, and they needed to do it. Yeah. But money finds the lowest level. So if you, you know, if you put $300 billion on the Fed's balance sheet in the form of lending to different banks that, need, you know, that needed it, um, that money is going to flow other places. And that, I think, is, a, is a, a big facet in what we've seen in terms of the stock market rally over the past few weeks. Well, we'll keep watching it because that, that rally is still on, we're told. So we'll see if it lasts today and can defy expectations that Powell could put a, a, a damper on it. Uh, Steve Vance, thank you both very, very much.